Hi everyone, welcome to Ben's Business Podcast, episode number 44. And today we've got a different setup with a group chat. This wasn't really meant to be part of the podcast, but why not? Um, we're, we've been trying to organize this for a, a wee while. We're, we've all been reading the book, Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. And we actually have a person who runs workshops in here, which is Derek Smith. Uh, he, or he teaches people on building a story brand and he's attended the, the workshops to, to go more deeply than the book. So that I'm sure we'll learn a good few things from Derek here today. And we're all going to share, we're all going to introduce ourselves, explain what our takeaways were from the book and hopefully bring you some valuable nuggets that we've learned from the uh, building a story brand book and how we've maybe applied it to our businesses as well. Um, we, what we'll do is we'll just start with Matt and we'll do a, a few intro, introductions. So yeah, give us a quick uh, one minute introduction of yourself, Matt. All right. Yeah. So uh, I'm living in Indonesia right now. Uh, my main job is an uh, English teacher, but I also run a side business for self-development. I've got my own website and do some public speaking events and workshops around Indonesia. So I felt like this book was uh, very applicable to uh, apply the SB7 and my uh, website and my strategy for uh, reaching out to people. So yeah, that's uh, just a little bit about what I do. Yeah. Okay, thanks Matt. And James, do you want to give us an introduction about yourself? Um, my main job is actually in the oil and gas industry. Um, I do like a engineering support role uh, on a rotational basis out in Angola. So um, I'm on my time off just now. I've got until next week uh, before I go back. Um, sort of as like a, a hobby that I've developed and a little bit of a side job is that I do uh, some video uh, like filming and editing and stuff, um, which normally takes the form of uh, promotional videos for companies and things like that. Even even the company that I currently work for, um, I've done some stuff for them out with my normal uh, routine job. Okay, thank you. And uh, well, yeah, Derek, would you like to give us an introduction about yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name's Derek. I'm in Tennessee. I'm in the United States. And uh, my background is actually in counseling. My education is in counseling and mental health. And uh, I was doing that um, as recently as a couple of months ago. Um, but then as you mentioned, Ben, I actually uh, transitioned full time into helping people with their marketing um, based on the principles in this book. Wow, that's powerful. So because of this book, you've made that transition. Yeah, I always, I don't know about you guys, um, I always thought marketing was just scamming. Like I always just, I get blown up with telemarketers and people trying to sell me stuff. And so that was my idea of marketing. And so this book showed me there was a different way of doing that. And, you know, I was in counseling. My passion was helping people. And I thought this was a way that I could help people grow their business and earn some, you know, freedom in their life. Um, so, yeah, it all started with this book about a year ago. Yeah, that's interesting. So this is actually the first time I've met Derek. Um, I've met James briefly and we, I, I know Matt very well just through the internet Matt's actually from you're from Thailand or staying in Thailand so um yeah we, Indonesia. We, we don't, we've never met in person yeah so it's, it's great to have you all here I'll, I'll do a quick introduction about myself I was the I, I started or the founder of Ben's Business Book Club uh, which kind of brought us all together um I do a lot of book reviews on Instagram and Facebook and I've also started the Ben's Business Podcast where I bring on guests and even do it solo and talk about marketing. Uh, my main core business is web design and digital marketing myself. So I've, I'm always reading business books, self-help books. I'm even going way into psychology and getting carried away with that side of things. And I find that so interesting, learning about human, um, becoming a bit of a philosopher, and then veering it back, bringing it back to business. So I, I'm so passionate about just learn studying the mind of people um, and I think that's what kind of 
maybe makes me interesting is that I'm not just a business owner. I really like learning about the mind of how things work and somehow tying that into being a, a marketer and uh, running my business. Um, so yeah, that I created Ben's Business Book Club off the back of having a web design and digital marketing agency. Ben's Business Book Club kind of took off and we're now at 1,115 and counting members. So it's, it's growing every day and it's great just having people, like-minded people like yourself that are reading the same books as each other and ha having everyone together. I think 25 people went and ordered building a story brand after a recommendation I put up there on Ben's Business Book Club, which was great. Um, and it was ve it's very hard to get a group of people together to discuss one book. So... Here, here we are. We've got just we've just lost Doogie somehow. I don't know what happened to him, but he was here with us, um, and he's also read the book. So it's it's quite amazing that we can all come together from different sides of the world. Um, I am from Scotland, where James is from, but uh, right now I'm in England. So we're all in different parts of the world just to discuss this book. So I'm very excited to get into it. I'll give a couple of takeaways. I'll start with myself, and we'll just go round again to Matt and James, and then Derek, and. We'll, we can share some takeaways that we got from the book and even after that we can go around again and explain some of the ways that we've actually added and used it in our business. So one of the key takeaways that I got from uh, building a story brand is the idea of how it really it, it is probably the best marketing book I've come across like like Derek's talked about it's as a it's not even a different approach. I've read lots of lots of marketing books like Seth, uh, um, Seth Godin, and I've learned a lot from Ryan Dice. And it was actually Ryan Dice of Digital Market who recommended uh, building a story brand book. And Ryan Dice is one of the best digital marketers I've known. So I took that as soon as he recommended that at a conference I was at. I went away and just bought the book and read it straight away because uh, I take a lot of advice and tips from Ryan Dice. So w I read that and I was very impressed. And the idea of mental calories, how, for example, you're in the first meeting with a client and you're trying to explain something technical, such as how websites work or how search engine optimization works. I wouldn't even use that phrase. I wouldn't say SEO. I would use words like get you higher on Google, which is solving their problem and focusing on the solutions to their problems and that's what they are looking for from us um, and emphasizing emph emphasizing with them uh, so that we're not just talking all technical jargon and our inner lingo words that we use in our in our business world with even like our staff we have to let go of that in their lingo and talk the customer's language and that's the main takeaway that i definitely got from that and how to then uh, some very practical tips on applying it to our website and that simplifying the website, like really cutting websites down and taking those words out and really reducing the text, giving them less options and the more options and choices you give them. And if it's all singing and dancing, they, they don't have a clue what to do and you end up losing them. Uh, and the same happens in a meeting when you, you give them lots of like sales options, lots of choices of products. It's about taking our business from what is a complex business and taking it into sort of packaging it up and giving, explaining and communicating it in the best possible way in our marketing and like our leafleting, our websites and all of that front end marketing and bringing them in, easing them in in uh, the most simple communicated ways possible. So that was one of the main takeaways that I've not already talked about in building a story brand, but there's so many takeaways and I've actually done other podcast videos about the things that I've used, but we can go into that later. So that's one of my main takeaways. People have a finite amount of mental calories and just watch what you're doing. Don't go, don't spend an hour in your meeting and go overboard with like talking about the tech, reduce and go for brevity when you're explaining your product to your your prospect customers and even your customers, existing customers, and just simplify things. That, that's my main takeaway. How about you, Matt? So, um, 
You know, what I uh, found out about this book a while ago uh, from your group and also from my cousin, uh, I just like the fact that it has, you know, stories as the main central theme. And, um, you know, because we can really, really connect with, with stories. Uh, the SB7 framework that the book talks about is very clear. Uh, and that's actually one of the takeaways that I got from the book is to be clear for your customers. The less clutter that you have, uh, especially on your website, and even if you're talking to your customers, the, the less clutter you have, the more clear you're going to be uh, and the more likely that you're going to help your customer uh, solve their problems. So, uh, and also the book really helped me to kind of picture myself in the customer's shoes, um, which is, you know, sometimes we don't really think about that. We think about, oh, how can we make money? How can we, you know, improve our business? But we don't really put ourselves in the customer's shoes. So that's, the book really helped me out thinking about that and, uh, also, I made lots of connections to some other books as well, like The Storyteller's Secret and uh, Persuasion or Influence, you know, because it talks a bit about psychology and how you can, you know, persuade some people. Um, yeah, so overall, the, the book really helped me to restructure my website. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic, fantastic book. I'm sure I will talk more about, you know, I'll have some more to say in a little bit. So Yeah, we we'll, what we'll do is we'll go around and give our, our one takeaway and then we'll maybe go around again and share some ways that we've actually implemented this. <coughs> so, James, would yeah. you like to uh, tell, sorry, tell us your takeaway? Yeah, um, I've just been writing a small list here. Uh, touching on what Matt mentioned, um, the big thing for me is the, the story part because at the moment I don't, I'm not a, an entrepreneur um, as such. Um, I've only really dipped my toe in with, with some of the, the work that I would like to implement this on. So I don't have a website at the moment that I can um, see where I'm going wrong, make changes to make the message clearer and all that stuff. I recognize it as being great content and great uh, advice from the book. Um, but for me, it's, it is this whole thing about it being a story. And I've sat down countless times to make a, a video for any uh, sort of type of client. Um, my background is manufacturing. So I've done a couple of videos for uh, workshops, machine shops and things like that. And uh, I end up, it's almost like having a writer's block. I sit down in front of the computer, I've taken a bunch of clips within uh, a workshop um, and I'm trying to make sense of it. And I really liked how uh, Donald puts it across that a story is a sense-making uh, mechanism. And one of the things, I don't know if it, I ended, in the end I ended up uh, reading part of the book and listening to part of the audio book. Um, but in the audio book, he mentioned about uh, some downloadable content. So um, everything that's in the chapters, I've now got like a, a guide here in front of me that if I was doing a job tomorrow and I needed to make a storyboard um, for a video, I've now got everything in front of me that I know that I need to, to, to fill out. And it's gonna help me so much when it comes to actually creating that content um, for any given client. And I really, really like this part about uh, being the guide rather than the hero. I've already been doing some of that stuff, but you don't know how to put it into words. And he's, he's done that uh, quite concisely uh, for us. So I thought it was really good for, from that point of view. Yeah, I, I envy Donald Miller's way of explaining marketing. I wish I wrote that book. <laughs> um, uh, examples and analogies and things. Uh, yeah. He, he does a great job of, yeah, articulating what it is um, that probably every every good marketer is doing. Um, but yeah, I agree with that a lot. Uh, Derek, would you like to 
tell us your key one key takeaway can i just make sure that when someone's talking if you click the mute button on my screen it's the bottom left and just mute yourself uh, when the other person's talking just in case we get background noise yeah i can uh, i can share my takeaway <clears throat> again my background was in counseling and so i was working with uh, people in an individual therapy setting um, and then sometimes family therapy um, and mainly with kids and teenagers um, was my experience. And so um, what really stood out for me in the book, um, once it gets to talking about the guide, um, the two things that the guide has to have are empathy and authority. And so he was essentially telling every business owner, every entrepreneur, every person in the service industry or whatever, um, by having more empathy you know, for your customer, you're gonna win big. And uh, in counseling, empathy is the name of the game. Uh, being able, as Matt said, to be in the other person's shoes, um, to be able to not just um, like see their situation, but to be able to put yourself in that situation and imagine if you were them and experience it that way. And so empathy was the big takeaway for me that marketing didn't have to be something that was sleazy, um, where you were trying to manipulate people, where you were trying to control people. Um, but it was really about having empathy and adding empathy. And it's my big belief that when we, you know, try for empathy that way, when we um, implement empathy in our own life, um, not just in our business, but in our relationships, in our work, um, you know, with our neighbors and the people around us, um, we win in a big way. Everybody wins in a big way. And so empathy was the big takeaway that as the guides, um, it's all about trying to be in that person's shoes. And then that's where all, that's where all the light bulbs start going off. And that's what happened for me in my business in the counseling business, and then as I also got started doing this, um, when you try to be in your customer's shoes, you know, you learn a whole lot about how you're doing things. And so then it's like, oh, yeah, um, if I didn't have an uh, MBA, then I would have no idea what the word SEO means. And so you start to realize, like, how your customer sees that. So empathy was the big takeaway. Um, I, I've got several things I would love to talk about, but that's the big thing for me, especially with my background in counseling, um, the empathy. Like that is what makes the world a better place. And so when business owners do that, um, not only you know, do they grow and make more profit, which is what everybody wants, um, but they just genuinely make the world a better place. Everybody is happier, everybody does better. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. It's like he, he repeats throughout the whole book. It's about positioning your customer as a hero, as Matt mentioned as well. Um, not yourself, because Ryan Dice showed a, a really good picture as a, an example of what people do really badly is he had a, a guy with all his trophies behind him, a business owner with all his trophies behind him, and basically promoting himself as a hero to try to sell, like say, look how good our business is, or look how good I am, and that's not attractive to the customer. They want to be the, the person who's the hero, and as we've before reading this book, we, do, we don't know that. We do, don't realize we're doing that. And we're positioning, our, a lot of people are positioning themselves as the hero. And it's a huge mistake because it makes sense. If you're wanting to buy from someone, you want to make sure that they care about you, not just about like, how well their business is. Yeah, I think it's neat. Like every day when we wake up, like we're all the hero in our own story, right? Like we have the self-talk in our head, like, as we see the world, we're the main character, right? And so everything that Don Miller talks about is, um, like, I'm not walking around looking for other heroes. Like, I'm trying to be the hero in my own story. And so I don't need a hero. Like, I'm excited for what you're doing. I'm excited for how you're going to save the day, you know, whatever your hero thing is. Um, but I need a guide who can help me, you know, solve my own problems and win, win the day for myself. Yeah, exactly. It's one of the, the notes I've got here is very related to that is you have to tell the customers you care and then in the customer's subconscious mind, they're always thinking, how are you, how are you helping me win the day? And that if they don't get that answer they, and realize you're not actually helping them win the day, you're just another number to them, they, they won't go ahead with whatever product or service you're selling. So and so that's, that's the, the theme throughout the book is position the customer as a hero and show them that you care. Uh, and empathy is like the massive, a massive part of that, that whole book, I would say. Uh, it's a, a big theme throughout it. So the, the next thing I think we, it'd be good to do is 
if we could, if I could ask you is how are you using the principles in this book and your business and just give some examples and even stories of uh, uh, how you're using that. Obviously, as briefly as possible, because we've got to go around the, the, round the table. Um, but yeah, give, give us some examples of how you're implementing this into your business. Uh, do you want to go first, Matt? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, so far, I've been implementing this uh, in two ways. So, one, immediately after I had finished the book, I had redesigned my whole website, uh, kept the theme kind of the same, but um, basically in one point of the book, it mentions about putting the uh, like buy now button or book me button in my case. Uh, since I do some public speaking and workshops uh, in the upper right hand corner above the fold in the center and a few more times down below. So I took care of that um, before my my website like message was not very clear like what am I actually offering. Um, <laughs> basically the the blog was like right up front. So by changing that I feel like people can tell exactly what I am offering right away, which is what the book teaches you to do. Uh, the other thing that I implemented uh, and what I want to also implement is in the content that I write for my blog. So whenever I'm writing some sort of content, it should be clear and also um, have some sort of like villain because the book also talks a lot about villains and the villain should be, relatable something or someone so whenever I write that piece I focus it and also focus it on uh, the type of service that I offer so at the end of each post I also say oh book me uh, for your next event something like that uh, so everywhere on the website it's very clear that what I am offering to the customer yeah uh, so those are the, the two things. Uh, and then the other thing that I would like to add that I haven't really done yet is uh, the newsletter. So uh, keeping up with like a monthly newsletter, uh, there was a structure. What was it? Um, maybe you can help me out here. It's uh, the, tra oh yeah, transitional call to action. So you do three transitional call to actions and then a direct call to action, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, not probably Derek could tell you that. It's not as fresh on my mind, this book, because it was a while ago. Uh, it's a while ago. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't necessarily describe like it has to be this way, but, um, you know, he gives the great example of your direct call to action. What you said is your book now is essentially your marry me button. Like if you were asking a girl out, you know, hey, will you marry me? Like it needs to be a yes or no thing, like the big commitment to engage with your service. But then what you're talking about, a transitional you know, maybe they're going to download something. Um, you know, I don't know exactly what your audience is, but if it's, you know, um, the 12, um, the 12 list, the, you know, 12 things you need on your checklist before writing a blog. Um, and so that's like your marry me is your book now, but then you're, you know, and they may say, no, like I don't even know you. Um, but you need to be able to ask them out again. And so your transitional call to action is what you're giving away for free. Like you said, maybe it's, um, hey, every week I'm going to send you a new tip for starting your blog or whatever it is. Or yeah, what James is holding like, hey, we've got this uh, outline we made for you. And so I'm not ready to buy your workshop. I'm not, made, I'm not ready to buy your online course, um, but I'll definitely download your, you know, your PDF, your ebook, your video series, whatever that is. And uh, there's some other people um, in marketing that do say like you need to have this and then this and then this and then ask for the sale. Um, but in building a story brand, it's, it's more about, you just need to have both. You need to have the direct call to action. You need to tell people what to do, but you also need to have the, you know, will you go on another date with me option? Yeah. The, the free downloadable, um, or give me the, your email for something in exchange that is, is that taking them on a date? Like you say, that was, uh, another takeaway that I got. And, uh, yeah, you've explained that. Well, James, would you like to tell us how you're, do you want to add anything onto that, Matt, actually, before we go on to James? Yeah, I covered the, the three things that I would like to 
that I have taken care of and that I would like to take care of in the yeah. future. It's, yeah. it's definitely a book that I'm going to come back to often. You know, I've marked it up and taken notes and going to implement some more as time goes along, for sure. Yep. It's a very practical book, and that, I think we can all agree on that. It's, the audio book just makes you want to get the, the physical book and download things and then, then go and actually even go to the workshops and just go uh, uh, like the extra mile with it because it is really um, gives you so much action steps to take that you just, you're going to have to refer to it often. Um, right, I'm just getting a wee pop-up here. Okay, we've got 10 minutes left on this meeting. <laughs> Um, right, James, do, uh, you want to give us your um, the way that you're implementing this or how you're going to implement this book? Yeah, um, I, I probably overshot a little bit on the, uh, the takeaway thing because it's, it's probably much the same theme. Um, like I mentioned, um, I'm still developing a hobby that I've, I've, I've had some sales. Um, to me, the teachings in this book, they would... Uh, if you were to follow this the way that you should, there would be great increases in sales, building up the the, um, the groups on the email and all that stuff that was mentioned. At the moment, I couldn't possibly uh, cope with that. If I, if I had more than sort of one or two jobs during the, the time that I had spare at home, um, that would be too much. So it's almost like um, I'm in a preparation phase just now where there's a lot of the stuff that I can apply on a... A singular, um, a single job, but at the moment it would be too much to actually follow it uh, to the T and, and have all of those uh, sales in the bag. <laughs> um, but I've, I only just finished the book yesterday, um, so I've got a little bit more thinking about how I'm going to implement some of this stuff. Uh, as you know, I was on holiday last week um, and to, to me, one of the things about the book is it's the, all of these uh, self-help and development books and stuff, they need to be quite repetitive to take everything in. Um, I think the first step for me is actually I'm going to read it once more just to make sure that I've absorbed everything. Um, and then the next job that I do, I'm going to consult all the different chapters in this, uh, this free giveaway and see if I can use it as an aid uh, on a sing single job basis before going forward and trying to use it to increase sales or anything like that. So, Yeah, we need to use the book as like a reference. Yeah. Um, like what Derek's got behind him, have your bookshelf behind you and just take a book out when, when you're taking action in business. This is how I use my bookshelf is I have a problem in business right now and I've got, oh, I've got the right, the perfect book or the perfect chapter to reference yeah. to in my bookshelf and that's why i think having a, a physical copy of the book even if you're listening to it on audio so important because i just literally have my bookshelf behind my desk and i, I grab it and I, I look at that chapter and I, I remember just to remind me how to yeah. overcome this this current obstacle um so yeah like i think this kind of book is just it's so practical there's so it's, a, it's literally a course in a book um, it's just explained so well that they've managed to fit a whole course into a book that yeah. you can really use that for your whole business uh, career and, and life because it's, yeah, there's so much in that book that you can use and constantly refer back to. Yeah, yeah so thanks, uh, thanks for sharing your... As a result of you, I've got the book and the audio book now, so... Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure I'm due a commission from Donald Miller. I think so. <laughs> uh, you, Derek, would you like to go on? Yeah, um, I can share. Again, like I mentioned, uh, when I picked up the book, I actually found out about the book because I was a fan of Donald Miller for a long time. Um, he kind of wrote some memoir-type books about his faith um, from before um, that were impact impactful on my life. And so when he came out with a business book, um, I mean, I read it just because it had his name on it. I wasn't planning on doing marketing or business or entrepreneur. Um, I didn't have any intentions whatsoever of doing what I'm doing now. Um, but read the book and again, just fell in love with it and how he used empathy. And he used a lot of principles from counseling um, in the framework because it's just about taking care of people in a really good way. And uh, what was interesting is when I looked around at my own counseling agency that I was working for, as well as counselors in my area, 
um, they're some of the worst at marketing and they're some of the worst at showing empathy, you know, on their websites. They have really, really unclear websites. Um, they do pretty terrible jobs about showing how they can help people. And so, um, you know, I was looking at websites that would say, um, we offer family therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy and narrative therapy and interventional holistic medical behavioral counseling. And, uh, I'm like, I only know what that means because of school. Like nobody knows what that is. Like they don't come to counselors because they want cognitive behavioral therapy. They come to counseling because they want to be happier because they want their family to get along. And so I was like here in my own profession, we're all about hope and empathy and making things better and helping people. Um, and here is the story brand framework, which turns us on our head and, and we were doing things so wrong. And so started implementing it. Um, and it actually led to me um, going to the workshop, like you mentioned. And so now I use the story brand framework every day. Um, I use it to help businesses mainly um, with like what Matt said, helping people on their website has kind of become my bread and butter is um, helping people understand like what needs to go where. Um, cutting out a lot of words to make it really clear, understanding that it's better to be clear than to be clever or cutesy. And so um, that's kind of the, the main work that I do. Um, I don't know if y'all have found this, but this will be kind of uh, the last takeaway I mentioned. I know time is running short. Um, I use the framework in everything. Um, I, I lead a Bible class. Uh, I lead a Bible study, and I use the framework when I'm preparing my lessons. Um, I run some workshops um, for business leaders and like some lunch and learn type stuff in the community and our chamber of commerce. And I use the framework when I'm writing my speech. Um, the framework has become like, I use it just to write an email. Um, I use the SP7 framework. Like it's become like, it's everywhere. It's all over my life now because um, I, you know, I have a problem with a family member and I like story brand it to figure out what I need to do and what the plan needs to be. Oh, that, that's interesting. I actually said that to my dad. The preachers or people who are trying to get people into Christianity or whatever religion it is need to learn marketing because they, they, they take that old approach that we before we read that book uh, and try to talk about what they want you to do rather than emphasize with them and really touch on the points that the, the reasons why they, they should maybe read uh, a, a religious book or come to church or whatever. Um, so that, that's an interesting part. I had a, a conversation with my dad, who's just right next to me. Um, but yeah, it, it's something you can use. Here's my dad here. It's, it's something you can use in any, like in a speech and in, in anything that you're doing that, that involves getting out, making real influ influence. Um, and it's not a book just about like it doesn't say it's a marketing book but it very much is a really one of the best marketing books out there um, not like a typical marketing book that explains like the ADA A for attention I for interest um, D for desire and A for action like it, it has that framework but it's expanded in a way that it teaches you how to simplify the message and put it in a story way but yeah the, I, I'm not going to go into one of my own examples just now on how I'm using it in my business. I, I have done a video on that already. Uh, I, I actually used the one of the near the last chapter about uh, testimonials and I, I'm, I've been doing really good video testimonials with clients and I let the clients do the talking because they obviously you have to give the clients a framework to tell what the, the problem was they were having. And, and building a story brand actually give you that structure on how, the questions to ask your customer and then their response to those questions give you the perfect testimonial. And if you can get that one step further, which I've done, I actually filmed my customer in my studio. Uh, I have a filming studio in Scotland and I, I got him in with the light in and uh, asked him a bunch of the questions. So I actually done a video on how I, how I actually got that put together but I can send you this, the link to show you an exact example of how I got that done and it made a really great uh, video testimonial because it talked them through that story brand script and the customer was doing talking for me so it's even better because it's positioning him as a, the hero um, so we're running out of time uh, thanks for everyone that's everyone joining us there um, so If you want to buy the book, 
it's building a story brand by Donald Miller and it's on Amazon. Uh, you can get an audible and um, we're going to get, we're probably going to get cut off in about a couple of seconds. So I'm just trying to wrap it up here. If you are running a business, you simply must read this book because it will make a massive difference in the way that you impact people through your, your marketing message. Oops.